Hallo Bernhard. Hi Carsten. So, what are we up to in this video series? <laughs> um, we are installing a scale-out file server on a mm -hmm. virtual storage basis direct system. Mm -hmm. Um, we do that because uh, in our Azure Virtual Desktop series, uh, we mm -hmm. want to use FSLogic and FSLogic use uh, user profile disks. And uh, the user profile disks are stored on a file share. And it would be mm -hmm. nice to have a high available solution here that you are not depending on one file server or one machine. So mm -hmm. uh, storage basis direct with a scale out file server would be a nice solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. I prepared already two machines, yeah. but you had a question or an. Or so an this art. is, yeah, this is a guest cluster concept, right? That you are doing. So you're using mm -hmm. HCI as underlying platform, as the hypervisor platform, and are putting a resilient guest cluster based in virtual machines on top of it, exactly. which is hosting the, um, okay, the storage spaces yeah. direct. Yeah, you could also buy two hardware nodes uh, mm -hmm. for this purpose, but of course it's a bit expensive. You have to use the data center edition of Windows Server 2022, mm -hmm. for example, and 16 cores. Um, but you have to, yeah, in virtual machines, if you have it on data center, they are already licensed. Uh, and I have mm -hmm. a customer who has some hundred users on such a two node virtual cluster. So it's mm -hmm. quite performant uh, and we we can really use it. It's a nice solution, but of course okay. you can do it with hardware. Okay, I have one question, but I'll park it because I think we may have some time to uh, to bridge, right? So yeah. Um, so what I have done, I, I prepared already two virtual machines and mm -hmm. let's uh, look into the settings of these virtual machines. Mm -hmm. See here, Uh, they have 32 gigabytes of memory. Um, mm -hmm. They have six virtual cores. And of course, they could have more. They could have more memory. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's just an example. Mm -hmm. And then I have my operating disk. There is a Windows Server 2022 data mm -hmm. center edition installed. I use the eval edition because this, uh, this uh, setup will not survive the next 180 days. So mm -hmm. the eval is It fine. Is it yeah. um, you know is it required to use data center or could you could you have could you have chosen uh, standard edition as well for for that yeah. role? No, not for this uh, not for storage spaces direct because the storage mm -hmm. spaces direct feature is only available in data center. So we have to okay. use data center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I added a number of virtual disks, yeah, uh, Hyper-V virtual disks, and I chose 10 here. That's mm -hmm. only because my script creates 10 virtual disks. You can go with four, that mm -hmm. would be completely fine. So four or more would be fine and they are performant enough. So you see they are also here in the virtual machine directory. Mm -hmm. And then I have, and this here I have three network cards, one, in the management network and two SMB adapters. This is a storage basis direct cluster. L like uh, an Azure Stack HCI cluster, you should have separate storage adapters because they have to copy over every change that is made on one server to the other server because we want a high available solution, right? Mm -hmm. So of, of this, I have two machines. You see node one, node two, and I already opened the two virtual machines here. Mm -hmm. So you see there they are in the domain. They have I, the, the network cards have IP configurations there. I mm -hmm. installed the updates uh, and I took the liberty to already install um, to one role and one feature. Mm -hmm. So here we look at it. I installed the file server role. Mm -hmm because yep. we want to have a high available file server, right? Mm -hmm. And I also installed the failover cluster feature. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we would use, so other way, uh, it is possible in Hyper-V and Azure Stack HCI, if you have RDMA enabled network cards on your Hyper-V switches, you could also use RDMA in virtual machines. So if you do that, 
you maybe have to add data center bridging. But in this example, we will not use RDMA in the VMs. We just, mm -hmm. because not every customer has RDMA enabled cards, we just go with TCP IP for storage uh, spaces direct. So I will cancel this and everything is set up. They're on the domain. So first we have to do our cluster test. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And for that, we go to Oh, that's the wrong one. I have to choose this one here. We go to the failover cluster manager. And we go to validate configuration. Mm -hmm. We have some information here. Yeah, you can yeah. ask if you want. Yeah, so I mean, it's for the audience, right? So uh, we did that exercise in, in a different series, which is about setting up the Azure Stick HCI host system, the underneath physical hardware, right? Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit about more in depth there. So Carson is doing the fast, the fast run on this. Um, but the, exactly. if you're new to this series, um, you know, it's valid or it's a, a very important thing to check for the uh, to do that validation first, right? Because you won't get okay. support from Microsoft uh, in case anything goes wrong. Um, and, um, you know, if you have any red flags on your uh, validation visit, um, and it's always good to have some sort of information and, yeah. and you know, um, before, You're com because complete, a lot of problems. You're completely yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I want to, uh, you can you can tell our customer, uh, our, our audience more, but I want to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, look yep. at this point again because not everyone will look at the series we've done before the tests we want to do usually all tests we want to do but unfortunately all tests is not storage spaces direct so you have to choose run only tests i i select and here you see storage spaces direct is not ticked so we have mm -hmm. to tick this and we can get rid of storage mm -hmm. and then we, we let our validation run so this right, is very so important. Don't forget it. Otherwise, the storage basis direct part will not be tested. And mm -hmm. if you have errors there, hmm, wouldn't be good. Yeah, the difference is, I mean, you have the disks attached to each virtual machine individually, right? And the test that was ticked would have, you know, been the correct one if the disks would be shared amongst the two the two virtual machines, which is not the case in our setup. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's just selecting the right option for the uh, for the setup you have. So let's talk a bit about the S2D in virtual machine, uh, the scale out file server. The nice mm -hmm. thing of the solution is we have a VM with some disks and you can just back up it like every other VM because it mm -hmm. has only local attached disks. Mm -hmm. If we would choose a file server with shared storage, for example, with mm -hmm. um, uh, VHD sets or uh, with a SAN over iSCSI, we can't use um, we can't use the, the change block tracking in backup. We because it will not it's not able to use SAN storage yeah, in, mm -hmm. in this scenario. So, but the test is is uh, finished, and uh, let's have a look at the report. Complete successful and suitable for clustering. So you can mm -hmm. look in allow block content. So you see here we have a really nice, nice <laughs> test. Everything is green. Yeah. Um, so uh, we can go on with our cluster creation, and you see here there's a little check box if we use that mm -hmm. create the cluster now using the validated nodes we will do that so we get into the cluster creation wizard and here we have to give it a name as to the one cluster mm -hmm. and maybe we have this account already so i have to delete it or to disable it mm -hmm. i will do that but first i have to give it an IP address. So if I go mm -hmm. to next and he, he will find an S2D1 cluster account and I'm pretty sure it will. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. I just fix it. Here's my domain controller. Let's go here. And here's our cluster. I will delete the object because I want to show you something else. I could also disable the object. That would be fine, but mm -hmm. I, on purpose, delete it because there is some 
important information we will show you later. Mm -hmm. okay. So now I do it again. It should not find the object and it says, I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can leave this. There is no storage to add because we don't have storage yet. We don't have volumes that could be included in the cluster. So we will have a cluster after the cluster creation wizard without any storage. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If the cluster is there, we have to do some maintenance or some additional tasks, and then we will add the storage. Okay, we will have we have again a report. We can look at the report, but I know it's fine. So let's mm -hmm. finish it. Yep. And here's our cluster. Okay. So, um, so now the housekeeping stuff, right? Or what exactly. we call housekeeping, right? Exactly. The cluster doesn't have a witness, for example. It's a two-node cluster. It should have a witness. Mm -hmm. In our Azure Stack HCI series, we chose a cloud witness. So in this in this small video series, we will go for a file share witness. So I go here, more configure cluster quorum settings. Mm -hmm. Next. Select the quorum witness, so we want to specify one. And then we have three options, configure disk witness, configure file share witness, and configure a cloud witness. Cloud witness, we did in the Azure Stack HCI series. File share witness, we will do. And a disk witness is not supported in an S2D scenario or in an Azure Stack HCI scenario. So this mm -hmm. option is not allowed, but unfortunately failover cluster manager is kind of Offering it. Finished of devel <laughs> developing. There, there is no change anymore. So uh, the product group couldn't take it out here for uh, if it recognizes as an S2D cluster. Okay. Uh, so we have to go with this one. From then, I have a special server for this. In my course, it's PK support. We have an S2D support share, and here is a file share witness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will specify that and it will set it. And now our cluster has a file share witness. Okay, and so the idea is if one node cannot reach to the other, they at least should be able to go to the file share and you know check who is who should be owning the resources, right? Yeah, do, do we have a, major, a majority of nodes left and mm. file share? So what does should the node do? Should he start mm. the service or shut it down and yeah. so on? So we have, we set the file share witness. Then there is something I always do that's that's pure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not mandatory, but I like it. Yeah, it's yeah, cosmetic. It's, uh... I rename the network adapters. I can do that very fast, SMB1. And uh, please look at the Azure Stack HCI installation series. There we talk really why we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So important with an S2D cluster, uh, that is a file server. The, uh, the, the scale out file server can only communicate to external resources when the cluster and client is set. So in our scenario, only the management interface can be used for incoming and outgoing traffic outside of the cluster. That would be mm -hmm. our user profile disk, can only use that mm -hmm. network. We have two more network cards here, and if you want to use them also, so you have you have to add also cards to your to your um, clients um, that can use this network, and then you have to enable cluster and client here. Otherwise, it will only use this one because it's only allowed. Yeah? Okay, now we have our cluster. No, yes, we have our cluster. Yeah. We have our witness, and now it's time to enable storage spaces direct. Mm -hmm. So I do that with PowerShell. As you like, I mean. Uh, I, yeah, I love, of course, I love PowerShell, you know that. <laughs> so we, we will increase the font a bit, otherwise you can't see anything. Now, and enable cluster, cluster S2D is the command for that. And we do a verbose. Again, in the Azure Stack HCI installation series, you will uh, you will get more information about this, what it does, and and so on. Here we just 
let it run. It will install storage bases direct for us. And then we can use these 10 additional virtual disks in every of the two nodes to build a high available storage. So in the mm -hmm. next, in the next uh, step, we will create two volumes. And then we can install our scale out file server role. And then mm -hmm. we will create shares. So mm -hmm. And then we have our high available. We have to do something with permissions. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I was voting for everyone permissions, but uh, yeah. was was really against it. So we will do some some yeah. some nicer permissions. Okay, I think our cluster is here. Yeah, there's, there is, of course, again, a report we can uh, look at, but uh, what we see here, everything is fine. We quite stand mm -hmm. for this action completely successful. So we now have our cluster. So next would be creating volumes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. creating volumes we can do with PowerShell and we can do with uh, Windows Admin Center. So mm -hmm. now is the time to add our node to Windows Admin Center. Here we have our Windows Admin Center. And if you watch the other series, you know we have our uh, high, our Azure Stack HCI cluster in here. And now I will add another cluster. And the cluster we just created, the S2D1 cluster. Mm -hmm. It should find two machines. Here they are. I do add. And I click on the cluster. Mm -hmm. It will now recognize that it is a storage basis direct cluster. So we have disks, no. Disks and nodes, that's not correct. He doesn't, rec does he recognize it? Does he recognize it? We should have volumes here. So we don't have volumes here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the thing we talked in our Azure Stack HCI series. Yeah, he didn't maybe. recognize it really as a storage basis direct cluster. So maybe we we see if, uh, if there are is any um let's see if there is you know any update to this one uh, that you need to do. No, there uh, there isn't. I think it's it's quite uh, it's quite it's quite updated. So mm -hmm. I think everything is fine, and this is a problem we have so uh we will finish here i will fix it and we in the next video we will continue with the installation okay